the All Work From Home series. My name is Michael Scherer. I'll be talking today about mindfulness and business consulting. So the first question I think we have to ask is, who am I? Well, let's say that people like categories and definitions and a way to put things in boxes. So it, it's a way of simplifying our thoughts. It makes it easier to make sense of things. So I try to give you a few things to categorize me. I was born and raised in Metro Detroit. I'm a big fan of my hometown. I was educated at the University of Detroit Mercy, a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And I went on to do my MBA at the University of Chicago. I currently live in Redondo Beach with my wife and daughter. And I'm a huge, huge hockey fan, but just don't ask me to play. Since a little kid, I've never been able to stand up on skates, but I love the game. I also love to hike, bike, walk outdoors, and travel internationally. So working from home, being stuck here has been a challenge for me. But um, balancing that, I, I practice meditation and mindfulness, both in my personal life and business hey, life. Hey, Michael? Yes. Michael, I'm going to... Are you, is anybody else, I'm just looking in the chat. I had some audio issues there too. Is everybody else having audio issues? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, I, I keep hearing it cut in and out. Uh, it's not cutting in and out, it's like static. Yeah. And so, and, and, I, and I was hearing it too. Like I didn't hear it initially. And then I, I was hearing it right when he started doing it. And I saw you trying to figure out if it was yours. Okay. Um, so I'm not one, sure if one, I'm not sure second. if your if your mic is is like because it seemed to be when you might move a little bit. Let's see a second. I thought my headset. Let, let me I just let me my headset let, let me ask if that's any better. That is. That is I, better. I'm coming through. Okay. Yeah. Much better. Okay. Good. 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 For some reason, if I unplug and replug and reset everything, it works again. So apologize for that. Okay. Cool. Should we go start again? <laughs> Take two. Take a mulligan. Yeah. It's a mulligan. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us today. This is the Y'all Work From Home series. My name is Michael Scherer, and I'll be talking to you today about mindfulness and business consulting. You know, the first question that I would ask is, who is this guy? Who is Michael Scherer? Well, let me say that I think that people like categories, definitions, and ways to do boxes. It, it simplifies our thoughts. It makes it easier for us to make sense of things. So I gave you a couple of areas uh, on my background just to kind of allow you to put me into uh, those definitions or boxes, whatever makes sense for you. But I was born and raised in Metro Detroit. I'm a big fan of my hometown. I did my undergrad work at the University of Detroit Mercy. Yeah, my MBA at the University of Chicago. I currently live in Redondo Beach with my wife and daughter. And I am a huge, huge hockey fan. Although from trying as a little kid, I've never been able to stand on skates. So don't ask me to play, but if you wanna watch, happy to join you. I love to hike, bike, walk outdoors and travel internationally. So this stay at home uh, thing that we're under here is uh, is challenging. Uh, typically, this time of the year, I'd be somewhere in the U.S., maybe in Europe. So, what I do to balance things is uh, just, just to uh, continue to practice meditation and mindfulness. And you'll see throughout the conversation today how I weave that into a day to day and help clients to do the same. I'm a firm believer of the quote: "Those who can must, and those who can't must do what they can." If we all work together, I'm sure we can solve many, many problems in the world. So I founded a consulting and advisory service practice back in 2007. And for 13 years now, we've been turning a profit. This year's a little bit of a challenge, but uh, we're still you know, putting out a lot of good thought and helping people and helping clients. And what I do is I advise and coach and consult to founders and executives across industries and around the world and I've worked with startup companies, I've worked with middle market family offices, I've worked with Fortune 500 and the largest company I worked with even fell into the Fortune 10 category. So the question a lot of people ask, and my, my friend Dwayne comes to mind, he's a general contractor in Arizona and a good, good friend of mine. And Dwayne would say, what do you do? 
And so I was looking for a definition of consulting. And I thought this was actually pretty good. If you just do a quick uh, Google search, this will pop up. But consultants are engaged in the business of giving expert advice to people working in professional or technical fields. We're in the business of giving expert advice to other professionals, typically in financial or business matters. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward. So Dwayne comes to mind again and he says, yeah, but what do you do? So I said, all right, well, let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. What does a consultant do? Consultants help companies with issues around people. We'll help companies to do things like design their organization. We'll help establish pay and incentive structures and plans. We'll help with their talent development. We'll do things with process, process optimization, automation, process improvement. And systems and technology will do things like implementation and utilization and data analytics. And we do a lot of other things as well. Strategy is a big term we like to throw out there. So again, I think we'll Twain is saying, what do you do? So consultants like numbers. We like numbers, we like spreadsheets, analysis, research, facts and methods. And we bring all of this together to help clients solve key problems. Oftentimes they don't have the ability to do it themselves. They don't have people inside the organization. They need a third party to come in and help them think through things. So what I wanna do next is give an example of a client. It's all stuff. Okay. Actually, Jeff was just texting me a few minutes ago, so I'm, I'm happy to pick on Jeff today. So Jeff's a senior executive. Jeff has a lot of problems to solve. From the time he wakes up until he passes out in bed at night, he wrestles with a multitude of challenges. Jeff is full-time thinking about things at work, thoughts pop into his mind about what's happening in his home life, he is worried about the project that got off track and is costing more money. It's going longer than it should. He's thinking about what his day looks like and he has to schedule time to interview somebody for a new head of international. And as soon as he picks up his phone and he looks at it, he realizes he's got two supervisors who are out sick. And oh my God, what do we do now? Because we've got these COVID restrictions and what does that mean? And Jeff says, oh, now I can't forget the fact that my kid's game is tonight. So I gotta be out of here by six to make sure that I get there on time. So there's a lot to get done today. Oh, wait a minute, I got two supervisors who are down. And we'll get back to that. There are 500 people that Jeff's worried about. He's got multiple facilities. He's working across different states. Now, was it Illinois or Indiana who just changed the requirements? I can't remember, but we'll figure that out. I cannot wait, Jeff's thinking, I cannot wait till August comes around and we get the family on a vacation, finally get out of here, right? But Saturday evening, he gets a call from a customer saying, hey, we've got a change in order. We've got a, an emergency rush. We need to get stuff shipped out on Sunday. So Jeff's on his phone all day, putting together a team. Sunday morning, he gets the crew ready. They're waiting for the truck to arrive. Customer doesn't show. They wait around till noon and the customer says, well, I had a change of plans, sorry. And Jeff's thinking, well, it's a 24-7 business we're in. This is, this is what I signed up for. Oh, wait a minute. I need to call my mom, too. I haven't talked to her in a week. Oh, geez. Wait a minute. There's another problem with work? Jeff's exhausted. You, you can actually look at the picture of Jeff here. Does, he look, does this picture look in focus? Not at all, right? Jeff cannot focus. So how do we help Jeff? We talked about the definition of consulting. And the question is, how does mindfulness help us in consulting? Well, let's look at this definition for a minute. Mindfulness, the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. I mean, Jeff's pretty aware that there's a lot going on. Mindfulness is this mental state, focusing on, on one's awareness of the present moment while, here's the key, calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. Let's think about Jeff. Jeff gets his team together, they go into work on a Sunday, client cancels the order. How do you think Jeff feels about that? What are the thoughts that are going through his head? What's the emotion that goes through his body 
as he's processing this. He just wasted a lot of time. He wasted other people's time. He could have been on with his mom. He still has that to do, right? You can feel the rush go through his head. You can feel the heat and the energy and build up. What does he do with that? I'll tell you what we try to help our clients with. And all of those different bubbles we talked about from a consulting standpoint, we can help manage. We can help put processes in place. We can help with people. We can help put technology in. But we need to help Jeff also. And the first thing, and maybe the most important thing that we do, is help Jeff breathe. Just breathe. Just take a breath. Step away for a minute. Just stop. Breathe in. I do all everyone I hope we can, can take a minute and just do this with me. Just breathe in. Feel the air come into your body. All right? Breathe in. And now let it go. Breathe out. All right? Not so hard, right? Let's focus on that a little bit though. Breathe in. Breathe in so that the breath comes into your body and all the way down to your belly. Breathe in. And breathe out. Got it? Not too hard, right? Everyone should be able to do that. So here's the exercise that I want us to do. And when I'm thinking about my clients, when I'm talking to my clients on um, Zoom calls, and we have a dozen people on, or if it's one on one, oftentimes, usually at the beginning, usually also at the end, I'll remind people to take a breath. And everyone's busy. On a Zoom call, you can see what they're doing. They're multitasking, they're doing something over here, they're doing something over there. The door is opening and closing, and I'll say, let's just take one, one minute out and take a break. Look out the window. Focus on something outside of the room that you're currently in, okay? So I'm asking all of you to do this. Just look out your window and whatever you see, look, maybe it's the clouds in the sky, right? That's what I see, a lot of clouds here. So we're gonna do this exercise together. Focus on something outside the window, and I'm gonna ask you to breathe, okay? So you're gonna hear a chime. And when you hear the chime, I want you to close your eyes. Focus on, seriously, focus on what you're looking at. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep your focus on that picture. Breathe. Now slowly, slowly open your eyes. That was one minute. Just one minute. How'd that feel to everybody? Is it a long time? Is it a short time? Do you wish you had more of those minutes? The key is that everybody can take one minute out of the day. Challenge us to remind ourselves to do that. And that's one of the things that we can do from a coaching and consulting standpoint to help clients. It's to help them make that part of their daily routine. One minute. Now, if you can do longer, great. I have one client who will shut his door after lunch and take no phone calls, no nothing. From 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, he has a chance to eat and focus on whatever he needs to focus on. He told me oftentimes, He'll sit there for 15, 20 minutes with just his eyes closed. And that is fantastic. Now, not everyone can take an hour out in the middle of the day, but pretty much every one of us can take a minute out of the day. Right? So the key is, and, and I'll give credit to Rian for the conversation we had yesterday. I love this idea about resetting and refocusing throughout the day. The, the idea of, you know, being able to work and work and work at, at you know, full, full on, full performance. 
but we need to balance that out. And here's the real challenge we've got, guys. We live in a VUCA world. And for those of you who have heard this term, you know it's a military term. It's been adopted to business. And VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Now, if this doesn't describe the world we're living in today, I don't know what does, right? So the question really here is, what do we need to do to be a good leader in a VUCA world? What does it take to manage and lead? Well, this is where things get challenging because leaders need to think about vulnerability, unknowingness, compassion, and authenticity. And David, make sure that you let Zanette know that I stole this from her because I think this is beautiful. And I think that we should think about how we implement this because this really is what allows us as humans to interact with each other so that we can tackle those big problems. All that stuff that Jeff's wrestling with, he doesn't need to deal with all of that on his own. He needs to lead teams, he needs to lead people, he needs to be a leader and a manager, but at the, at the base of it, he's a human being. And this is really where I think we all can strive to do better. I know I certainly can, but if we think about bringing this into today's world and leading from a standpoint of vulnerability, you allow yourself to connect with the people around you. You give them a safe place for them to open up and it gives you a chance to lead by example. I could tell you stories about things from my background, from my history, from you know, what happened in the, in the meeting we had this morning, but by making that something personal, by giving you an example of something that I have faced, right? I, and I could, I could go dark on you. I could, I could make something really happy and light, but if you tailor it to what the needs are for the people that you're talking with and what they need, create the space for them, right? We had a great conversation, by the way, last week. I was facilitating a discussion with 10 operational leaders and the topic of diversity and inclusion came up. And let me tell you, that was very uncomfortable. And one of the leaders was so fantastic in allowing herself to be vulnerable and to speak from the heart about what it's like as a person of color to rise through the ranks and the difficulties in doing that, it allowed the entire group of people to feel like if she can do it, the rest of us should be able to do that too. And a safe place was created and we had an, just an amazing conversation that followed. In that same call, one of our executives said, I, I, I know what it's like when, when you know, something breaks on the line. I know what it's like to deal with you know, this problem and that problem. I've been in this business for 20 plus years. When somebody comes into my office, I know exactly how to tell them what to do and coach them and guide them through. But things are changing so fast. There's so much information out there. We don't have time to parse through what is true and what's not true. There's so much data available to us. Not any one person can possibly know everything. And I don't know about you, but I grew up in the world of the subject matter expert. You know, Joe has been in this business for so long. He's got the expertise. He knows exactly what to do. So if you have that problem, you go talk to Joe. Well, guess what? What Joe knows doesn't matter as much as it used to because that information is available and it's changing so fast. We cannot possibly know everything. And when you get to topics that are difficult, challenging, outside of your comfort zone, you don't have the experience, you don't have that knowledge. As a leader, again, back to the vulnerability, you need to admit that. Surround yourself with people who can answer those questions. Bring the knowledge in in a group fashion and allow people to be part of the solution. No one person needs to be the, the, the complete champion uh, of an answer, but champion of a team and, and leading that team to the answer together is what's key. Compassion, right? I think about, uh, there's a line from, from a movie years ago where the girl said, just be a little human, right? Be decent. My favorite 
saying is, uh, you know, be nice to me, and I'll be nice to you. Right? It's not difficult, but we need to break through and be cognizant of the fact that, you know, look, we are all humans. We're all fallible. We show up to work every day. We come in with the best intentions, ideally, right? But I think I don't think that there are many people who get up on, out of bed in the morning and say, I'm going to go out and just, you know, cause chaos through the world, right? Nobody's that malicious. Things happen, but show a little care for each other, right? Treat everybody the way you want to be treated. The golden rule. Here it is again. My mother would be proud. And maybe the key to, to, to all of this is authenticity. And this is where we as individuals need to take a step back. I, I have been very fortunate over the last few months to have the time to work from home, to carve out time for myself and really focus on you know, my internal self and, and, and look at the journey that I've been on over these years and connect with you know, who I am. And it has allowed me to be the best person that I can be. I'm not always perfect, right? And I don't really want to pretend that I am. But by, by connecting with the things that matter to me and opening up my mind and opening up my heart and looking for the things that we have in common. We have, as humans, we have more things in common than we do different. I was thinking over the last week, and I see some people on the call who, who will understand this, but over the last week, I've had <clears throat> good, meaningful conversations <clears throat> with people excuse me, <clears throat> with people across the U.S., with people in Canada, U.K., Germany, Italy, India, and, and Australia. And if I think about the conversations, you know what? We're all talking about family. We're all talking about business. We're all talking about this crazy pandemic that we're dealing with. We're all talking about the inequality and racism that exists in the world, we're all faced with the same things. And you know what? Everyone gets up in the morning thinking, I need to take care of my family, make sure there's a roof over our heads, food on the table. Everyone starts the day pretty much the same way, finishes it the same way, and the activities throughout the day are largely the same. That's the commonality, just the basic humanity of things. So let's jump into this, which is um, you know, really just sort of you know, bringing together how I'm working from home comfortably and, and mindfully and what my day looks like. And I think about Jeff and I think about uh, in the world and what everyone has to deal with. You can put your own time frame together for this. You may get up at six, you may get up at nine, it doesn't matter, right? But for me, these are the key things that I try to work with throughout the day. And, and to, again, to play on Rian's conversation yesterday about the, the idea of oscillation, where throughout the day when we're working, we need to be at peak performance. But in order to keep peak performance, we need to balance that with times of rest. So I just kind of walk through this kind of briefly. I know you guys are reading through it. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, and again, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to say that I do this every single day, but I try, okay? I wake up in the morning and I realize, you know what? You woke up. That's a pretty good start. I mean, think about the millions of people who don't wake up. I know it seems silly, but honestly, there are millions of people who every day they go to bed just like I went to bed last night and they don't wake up in the morning. Pretty grateful for that. I look over, I see that my wife is breathing or she's got no Great, more gratitude. My day's off to a great start. I get up, I shower, I dress, da 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 da. I get downstairs, I, I get my coffee started, I squeeze the lemon in my water and have a drink of water before I eat my yogurt. And then I sit down and I take time to meditate. 15, 20 minutes uh, to do an Isha Kriya in the morning. It's a simple chant that I listen to. I like a guided meditation in the morning. 15, 20 minutes, and I'm good to go. I get up, get my coffee, which is now cooled down, ready to drink. I'll check my schedule for the day, look at the texts that will come in, if there's anything that's urgent. Maybe I'll check through some social media, see what my friends are doing, check the headlines, you know, want to make sure that I'm 
staying on top of current events. So we've got things to talk about throughout the day. And you know what, at this point, I've been awake for about 45 minutes. That's all. It doesn't take that long to get to this point. But now I'm ready. I'm ready to take on the challenges of the day. Turn on the computer, get to work, 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 work. I remind myself to get up. I'm sitting down today, but I've got one of these desks that elevates. And I may throughout the day raise it up, lower it down. I've got an exercise ball over here I can sit on. So you know, I like to get my wiggles out like some of the kids do in school these days. I think it's fantastic, right? Your body is moving, it's warming up. You're able to move around a little bit and you stay focused. But throughout the day, you gotta remember, take a break, recharge, right? Go down and get a cup of coffee, come back and work. Midday, today I'm sharing it with you guys, but usually midday, I'll step out of the office, home office in this case, walk down the hall, find a nice quiet place. I'll do some stretching, maybe some exercise. It's a day I walk around the block. I'll spend 15, 20 minutes just doing some light exercise. It's good to clear the mind, but it also allows me to re-energize the body. Quick lunch, back to work, drink a lot of water throughout the day, make sure that I'm fueled throughout the day. I've got my 4 p.m. apple, and, and uh, anyone who's worked with me knows I like to travel with an apple. And by four o'clock, I'm ready for a little extra energy. And then I get to the end of the day. And again, I, I'm not trying to put any kind of time frame around this because the end of the day, it may come at five o'clock, it might be seven o'clock, it might be who knows when. But at the end of the day, and I kind of have a sense of when that is, I'll wrap things up. I'll prepare for the next day. I'll put my schedule together. And when I'm done with it, I can set it aside. I'll take a few minutes out, get some more exercise. Again, 15, 20 minutes is fantastic. If I can do a nice yoga routine, fantastic. And again, I'll meditate. And the meditation this time, it's a little more of uh, a little more involvement. Um, but it, again, whatever works for you guys, it's really, you know, take that time to close the book on work day and be able to move into the next phase of your day. Since we're working from home these days, getting downstairs, helping out with dinner, I like to man the grill. So that's usually my job. We eat, we have conversation over dinner everyone cleans up by at my house usually it's by eight o'clock we're done with dinner sometimes it's a little bit later than that and we'll head off to the other room and either watch tv we'll chat a little bit maybe play some games maybe we're all into our own thing and checking social media reading articles whatever but also this is the time when i'll, I'll have to occasionally and twice this week i've done it already excuse myself and go back to the office because i've got a couple more hours of something i need to finish because it's something important for the next day Understanding the balance though, right? That's the key. You can blend this in. Some said there really is no work-life balance. It's life-life and work is part of life. And I believe that to be the case. But I do have certain times when I try to stick to my, my rules, right? What works for me. I get to the end of the evening and my, my phone goes off. No more texts, no more emails, stop checking social media turn off the phone, and I try to relax. I get into bed at the end of the night, and I go through my mind, you know, what were some of those things that I accomplished? And what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for family. I'm grateful for the nice house in the neighborhood that I live in. Grateful that I was able to spend the day on this planet. And I kind of work my way through this process of just thinking to myself about good, positive things that have gone through the day. And then I get to that point where I'm stretching and relaxing and getting super comfortable. And I fall asleep. And guys, I'm telling you, I fall asleep within 10 minutes. I'm gone. I'm good. I'm good for the night. I'll get my seven, eight hours of sleep and I'm good. And I get up and I start off the next day. And I, I, I share this with you, not to say that this is a perfect schedule or that you should try to adopt this, but this is something that I've been honing over a long time. I mean, easily over the last year, I've been trying different things to see what works. And this is what I've found at this moment in time is what works for me. This allows me to work at peak performance. It allows me to get those points throughout the day where I can recharge. And if I can have a story around this and share this with Jeff, as Jeff is having his crazy chaotic day and he gets up way earlier than I do, maybe Jeff will think about, hey, I'm going between here and there, 
maybe I can just step outside for a minute and breathe some fresh air and look up at the sky and have a little gratitude. And I've seen this have tremendous impact on people. I've been coaching and training for a long, long time, 20 plus years in this business, but it's really over the last year and especially in these last few months of somewhat challenging and chaotic times that we live in when I've seen tremendous, <clears throat> tremendous growth in people. So let me stop with a couple of, let me finish up here with a couple of comments and we'll talk about uh, some Q&A. So in summary, I honestly believe that taking a practical, mindful approach to life and business allows us to be the best that we can be and the best leaders that we can be. And when I'm coaching others, being able to be of service to others, I see things that remind me that I need to take care of myself so that I can be there to take care of those around me. Integrating mindfulness throughout the day allows this, I love the count, that, that comment, the oscillation between peak performance and rest. I love that. And maybe the greatest thing that I've really learned over the years on this journey is that of acceptance. I heard this comment about acceptance and if you think about life in terms of what life truly is. Life is that moment between your breath in and your breath out. That's it. The past is the past. You can't do anything about the past. And you certainly can't do anything about the future. You can plan for the future and we need to plan for the future. But there's no guarantee that that's coming. What you have is this moment. And this moment is absolutely perfect. It's just the way it was meant to be. Not, not that moment, but this moment. Not, not that moment, the past three, but the moment that we're in right now, this one. This is the one that's perfect. Accepting things just the way they are allows me to live every minute to the fullest. And I, I hope that in sharing this with you guys, that you pick up something and you can carry it forward and you can share it with others. And I am absolutely convinced that if we are all rowing in the same direction, and open and honest and caring for each other, that we will make this world a much, much better place. So thank you for allowing me to go on through these slides. I'm gonna open it up for Q&A. And David, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of the All Work From Home series. It was great, great to have you, Michael. Terrific session, thank you so much. So Michael, thank you so much for defining what my husband does. I've, I've been married to him for almost 20 years and I, I, I never quite figured out what the heck he does, you know, and, and so I, I, now I have a better idea <laughs> as a consultant. Yeah. I, I, I love, I, so my friend Dwayne, as I mentioned, <clears throat> he's a general contractor. And he was, uh, this was a few years back, he was over here and he said, so let me get this straight. There are, there are people who set up businesses and they're running their companies and they don't know what to do and they have to call you in to help them figure it out. Yeah, pretty much. Right. But you know, it's, just, it's the same thing. You know, people go to the doctor when they've got a problem, right? People see the therapist when they have a problem. Uh, a lot of what we do is just, you know, it's helping people think through in a lot of cases what they already know. Right. And then bringing a little outside, uh, you know, reference points or perspective to help people think differently. Right. I, I think it, interesting with regards to, you know, I, I was, I was pretty blown away how long that one minute was. Um, <laughs> and um, because my minutes passed very quickly. Um, and so that was a really powerful, that was a really powerful thing to do. And, and, and to your point, you know, it's interesting, you know, sometimes, we we are going so quickly we, we don't we don't stop to not only you know people sometimes we don't stop to look around what's around us but we don't look at what's happening to us in the context of everything and when you are aware of your surroundings and you're kind of almost looking at it like you are watching where you're playing in this tv show of life um you know and and what's happening taking that moment to just stop and kind of pivot it 
um, yeah, that's, that's really powerful. And like you said, it's, it's, it's that we might find that, that moment of insight um, that maybe somebody else would have told us, but, and, and we kind of know it, but we're not actually taking the time to listen to ourselves and to hear it because mm -hmm. we're, and I'm very guilty of that um, because we're, we're going so quickly. So I yeah. appreciate, I appreciate, you know, this perspective and just the reminder that um, just because we can work a lot all at once, move, move and bulldoze yeah. through it, it doesn't mean we have yeah. to, despite what we've got going on. So true, Ada. so true. I will say that I was the one, and you know, maybe there are others on this call, wink, wink, who would do things like wake up at four in the morning and rush over to the computer and start working because we got to get ahead of what's coming for the day. And then we crank through the day and, you know, we, we forget to get up and move. And next thing you know, we're sitting in our chair for three hours and, oh my God, you talk about a backache after that. And then you get through the day and it's like six, seven o'clock at night. And oh, geez, I, I got to take a break and eat. Right. And then I get back to it and I'm cranking away until nine, 10, 11 o'clock. I could work 12, 15, 18 hours a day, have done that all, all too many times. But I can tell you that since I've gotten onto this current path of taking care of myself and taking breaks, I can get more accomplished in a 10 hour day than I ever got accomplished in, in you know, a, a 15, 16 hour day. It's, it's, it's amazing the difference that it's made for me. And, and not even to mention the, the physical differences. Um, I shared this with David in the, in the group, I think last week, but um, late last year, uh, I went for my physical and, you know, the doctor went through all the different things and he said, well, my friend, you've got a few things to change and it's, it's up to you. You can keep coming back to me and we can keep, you know, we can look at, you know, medication or whatever, but you can look at, you know, what your life looks like and figure out how to make some changes as well. And by implementing what seemed like incremental improvements since January, my blood pressure has dropped over 30 points. Now, I still could lose 20 some odd pounds, but uh, I'm, I'm much calmer, much more focused and uh, much more productive throughout the day. Well, stress makes you hold on to the weight too. So that's the fact. That's a little bit long, a little bit longer to work that. I, I just need more than coffee and an apple to take me through the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is this is really great, Michael. Uh, you know, one comment that I have, and maybe you're doing winking at me here, but. Uh, I, I really like uh, what you talked about. It's really about intentionality as to how you go through your day and where you spend your time. I think that that is that is a tremendous. Also, too, just to just to talk about that minute. That minute seemed very very long, and I and I think part of that conditioning is just you know taking a look at your phone all the time, for instance, and how how short a time goes by, and not using your phone for you know a minute even sometimes is is, is amazing. It's amazing the world that we live in. Yeah. So, so all, all that is tremendous. Uh, a question I have for you actually is uh, uh, the, the vulner vulnerability aspect of things. I thought was, was a really interesting component in being able to, to uh, bring people into that and, and, and really help out uh, in your day-to-day -day life. Um, the question I have for you is related uh, to dealing with executives because sometimes executives aren't necessarily all the time enlightened and they may seem that vulnerability as a weakness. Uh, and so the question is, is do you mimic um, uh, their disenlightenment or do you try to make them enlightened or, or how, how do you go about that in order to, uh, you know, ensure that you, you keep them as a, as a client? That's great. That's a really good question, Steph. And, and, you know, I think that the reason why clients hire us is because we're honest and we do bring that authenticity. Now, if there's a client who has to be the strongest leader and, and kind of you know, portray himself or herself in a certain way that doesn't allow them to be vulnerable, maybe it's that they don't show themselves that way to the outside world. But if you can get them behind closed doors, 
in a moment, right? And, and obviously this is not something you walk in on day one and you have, but as you build trust with your clients and you're working with clients and helping to co-solve problems with them and they, they you know, really see you as a trusted advisor, you can start to have some of those conversations and you'll see. I, I would say more often than not, there will be a, a crack in the armor and you'll be able to work with that person, but every single person is different. Um, I've been on calls where 15 minutes into a conversation, first time talking to somebody, they open up and they're telling me about, you know, childhood abuse and drugs and alcohol and I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's like, wow, I didn't expect that, but okay, here it is, it's on the table, let's deal with it. And there are other people who are just like, nope, this is it, solid armor, not getting through, mm, you know, some weeks or months or in some cases years down the line, those people open up too. Okay. The more that you show it's okay to be human, the more that they start to emulate your side of things. All right, very good, great, great point. I, I like that last one too about them emulating you and doing it in a fashion that's not you know, it doesn't have to be day one when you meet them. It doesn't have to be that first impression. That's, that's very yeah. Good. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, it's interesting. If you look at the people that I know, and you know, you've got a large group of friends and colleagues as well. I've got some people who are extremely creative and I've got some people who are extremely analytical and everything in between. And I have a, a good friend of mine who said, you know, you, sometimes you just need to be you. And if the clients can't accept that, then, you know, you probably don't want them as a client anyway. And she's worked her whole career around just being herself. She's an amazing marketer. She does a great job from marketing strategy to the implementation and working with clients and teams. She does a great job, but she's not the right fit for everybody. And she knows that and acknowledges that and accepts that. And I thought, you know, makes sense. 